Good morning, a very warm welcome here to Holst in the Netherlands as we get ready for round seven of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup. Little town, a population of 27,000 people. And everyone is ready for a great morning of racing. We're very early with the UCI Cyclocross World Cup today. The first time that the elite women have had to race so early in the morning, but they're already, they've been out on the course already, taking a look at what the various contours of this famous course are all about. It's going to be a tricky one. It's rained uh, a considerable amount overnight. That's made this course pretty wet, pretty muddy, and could be quite tricky for the riders to deal with. Still raining now as we take a look at the standings in this World Cup. The leader is Fem van Empel with a massive advantage of 90 points on Celine del Carmen Alvarado. Puck Peters in third place, courtesy of her consistent performances throughout the season so far. It's cold, it's chilly, seven degrees, 16 kilometer an hour winds, and it's raining and it's due to rain all the way through the races which will make the men's race quite interesting because tyre choice is still being made as far as the men is concerned. Let's take a look then at today's course. We are down in Hulst in the Netherlands. The course for today is 3,000 metres in total. The riders have got a run into the finish line from the start, 75 metres. Features the bridge on a couple of occasions, a second bridge as well on the course, then a third. And then the riders have also got the barriers just before they make their way down towards the finish line. That should make things quite interesting, particularly in the women's race, where the likes of Puck Peters can jump those barriers and other riders don't quite yet have the technical capability to do that. As the rain falls, let's hear from Could some of the riders. Said, are you ready for another victory? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> it went good last week in Overijsen. What's the difference between Hulst and Overijsen? Uh, yeah, Overijsen was more uh, climbing and slippery. Uh, today's slippery too, but the uphills are really short. Uh, so not really climbing, but more uh, technical uphills. So Fem will be closer to you perhaps today? I think it will be uh, closer, but uh, due to the rainfall, uh, maybe not as close as uh, the past few races we've seen. Fem van Empel, what does this race say in Hulst? Uh, I think uh, it's going to be a hard one, uh, very slippery. So uh, a lot of uh, rain uh, last night, so uh, I think uh, it will be a hard one. We saw Lucinda Brandt was trying to get rid of you already <laughs> before the start. <laughs> Yeah, indeed. Uh, but uh, now it's uh, uh, yeah. Um, I uh, I want to uh, go on the left, and she wants to uh, go out of the course. So uh, yeah, it was a mistake, but no problem. You seem to stop winning. Uh, what's the reason why it is just a little bit less than the, the first races? Well, second is not uh, uh, not bad, I think. So. Um, uh, I said of, uh, of Thomas Mechelen that uh, the focus in November uh, s um, is ab all about the training and uh, that's why I'm maybe a bit tired in the weekend. So uh, uh, yeah, I'm still happy that I be on the podium. So uh, today is a new chance, a new chance to win and yeah. Thank you. An interesting recce of the course then as Lucinda Brand and Fem Van Empel had a little bit of a touch of wheels. Van Empel didn't look too happy but had a chance to think about it by the time she was interviewed. You can sense that the pressure is building on Fem Van Empel in the press and she's starting to deal with it already pretty well. They feel like she hasn't won for a little while, but let's bear in mind, she hasn't been out of the top two so far in the various rounds of racing. But such is the focus on these riders in cyclocross, particularly on the, the Belgian television stations, that they really do hone in on any little thing that they can pick up on. Lucinda Brand makes her way onto the front row of the grid. We've got seven rows of the women's grid today. 49 riders on the start line. Ten different nations represented. Shireen Van Androy makes her way to the start.
Last little bits of preparation. The riders keeping their warm jackets on. All smiles between Fen Van Empel and Puck Peters. They seem to be just enjoying uh, riding at the moment. Inga van der Heide makes her way onto the start line. The last four riders about to be called forwards. Then we'll introduce them to you. A very warm welcome to you this morning. I'm Anthony McCrossan. Don't forget, you can find out all the information about the UCI Cyclocross World Cup at uci.org and follow on social media at UCI underscore cycling. You can also get me on social media throughout this race and the men's race at Ant McCrossan. That's where you can get interactive and chat about the race and give your predictions and thoughts and ask questions as we make our way through what I think is going to be a real tussle between these riders today. Two teammates following each other onto the grid. And the final rider is about to take her place right on the front. Looks like the rain is abating here a little. Our grid is now made up. So the seven rows of the grid. In terms of other riders not on the front row, I guess the uh, one to watch out for is the second row on the grid. Anik van Alphen, who was sixth last time, is on the second row of the grid today. You'll note that there's no Mariana Voss. She won yesterday in Kotrik, but she's chosen not to ride this round of the World Cup. She's going to be back in Zolder in one month's time. She started her break in the season. So many rounds of the World Cup, you've got to really think about which ones you ride, which ones you don't ride, how to maintain your form all the way through, of course, to the World Championships. The last jerseys being unzipped. And riders like Lucinda Brand choosing to keep the uh, long leg warmers on as well, as long as possible. Are we going to see a return to winning ways of Lucinda Brand today? The Swan years are going to be pretty busy. So are the mechanics today as we get ready to introduce the grid to you. This is uh, the French rider, Alain Clausel. Always a good starter, had a good start last time. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, second overall in the World Cup, is showing signs that a World Cup win isn't too far away. Alongside her, Puck Peters, all smiles from her, the under 23 World Cup leader and the winner last time out in Overizer. Alongside her, Lucinda Brandt coming back from that broken finger. Alongside her, Inga van der Heide, fifth in the World Cup. And it's Denise Betsema, a little bit off form at the moment. Hasn't been in the top six in the last two rounds. The World Cup leader with a huge 90-point advantage, Fem van Empel. And the final member of the grid, Shireen van Androoy, who is certainly on form podium in the last three rounds and one World Cup win as well. We're all set. Welcome along. We're in Hulst in the Netherlands. This is round seven. We're on red. And we wait for the green lights to get this race underway. Go, go, go. And we're underway in Hulst for this UCI Cyclocross World Cup. And a very, very fast start at the front. Elaine Clausel and Puck Peters, shoulder to shoulder. This is a very skiddy left-hander onto the grass. All safely through there. Sana Kant with the best start I've seen from her for a long time. So Puck Peters up there at the front. 
Salindo Carmen Alvarado choosing to wear leg warmers today. She goes through into second place. Peters trying to do what she did last time. So it's Peters from Alvarado. And just behind Fem Van Empel, fourth place for Sana Kant. The Belgian champion looking good today. Little tricky right hand turn here onto the single track. Causes a little bit of congestion. This is a tricky little section for the riders as Puck Peters dives down. Sana Kant in fourth place still. It would be wonderful to see a rider who dominated women's cyclocross for years get a big result here in Holst. Peters from Alvarado, from Fem van Empel, from Sana Kant. Behind her, Inga van der Heide, then Shireen van Androoy. Denise uh, Betsam a little bit further back. Lucinda Brand having a few trials and tribulations at the moment. Sana Kant having to drag her bike up that little section. You can see what uh, Puck Peters was saying a little while earlier in that this course doesn't have the climbs that you had in Overizer. All the climbs are short, sharp, little tricky sections. Past the pits for the first time. Pits at 600 metres and 2,200 metres today. It's really lined out already. Marie Schreiber up there again in a good position. Well, we'll give you an overview of the various lap times during today's race as well. So you can keep up to date with the speed that the riders are putting out on this course. But Peters is absolutely ripping it through this course already. Making short work of these little uphill sections. So we can't slipping and sliding up these steps. I noticed the riders in the recce were just trying to pick which side of those, that little uphill section, which is almost mud steps cut into the hillside. And they were having a really close look, trying to work out, do you go left-hand side, do you go right-hand side? Where's the first little step come in? Peters is doing exactly what she did last time. Riding away from the rest of the field after three minutes of racing. Here is Denise Betsema. Betsema is not having a great time at the moment. Betsema has gone right off form recently. She's down in 21st place right now. Which is really strange. Betsma started the season fourth in Waterloo, fourth in Fayetteville, then she was fourth in Tabor, fourth in Masmechela, and since then, Betsma just hasn't figured at all in the racing. Oh, and a crash there. And a fall for Inge van der Heide. And another fall, oh, a couple of riders, really tricky sections here. Here's Shireen Van Androoy, Sana Kant's shoulders starting to go, that start was maybe a little bit too quick. There is Inge van der Heide after that fall, she's safely back on, then Sana Kant behind her in the green, Marion Norbert Ribberol. Just behind in the colours of the French champion, Lena Berkier. And it's number 54, who's the rider who really has started to show as a strong rider, Marie Schreiber, the Luxemburger. Leaning right into that hillside, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado. And onto the steps with a very fast sprint up there. Sana climbing away up this hill. Can take what feels like an age to reach the top. Couple of riders choosing to take the left-hand section rather than the right. And now we've got two leaders. Lovely little bit of technique there by Puck Peters. 
And Celine Del Carmen Alvarado have to take the left hand section and lean the bike over to the right a little. Yet again, these two riders locked in combat at the front. They've already got a seven second advantage on Celine Del Carmen Alvarado. Shireen Van Androy is at 13 seconds. This group are at 25. Marion Norbert Riberol, a rider who we've seen, of course, feature in World Championships. Oh, that was a big fall. Big fall for Yara Kastelein. Whoa, that was a huge fall. Another big crash over the top by Marta Troyan. And another fall at the back here. Wow, there's a number of riders finding that section just a little bit tricky. Wow, look at the speed of Fem van Empel down that dive. That was impressive. So riders taking the left-hand line as we look, but Fem van Empel thought, no, let's just take the right-hand line and go flat out down it. That takes real poise and real focus to be able to do that. These two riders then joining up at the front, the two youngsters who really have been the key riders in the racing so far this season. Van Empel's been training very hard during the week. Trying to build her form as they go past the pits on the second part of the course. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado looking for a top position. She finished second in Waterloo early on in the season. But suddenly, Peters and Van Empel have taken women's cyclocross to another level. They actually also, before the races start, they look like they really enjoy just being alongside each other and racing each other. Marion Norbert Ribrol in her best position in a World Cup. Ribberol was the under-23 world champion in 2020. It's taken a little bit of time until she's reached the top level again. On that occasion, she beat Blanca Vass into second place and a K in third place. K, of course, has had a lot of trials since she finished in that top place in that under-23 world championship, but she's back racing this weekend. Was hit by a car last year. And a okay, K, though, starting to look a little bit stronger as Van Empel drops away from Puck Peters. And she's going to lose a little bit more time here because Peters is coming up to the end of lap number one. And we know that she can jump the barriers and take even a little bit more of a lead. Here's Alvarado. Puck Peters with that technical capability just has that little advantage. Coming up to the end of lap number one for our leader as Fem van Empel tries to come back. A lap of nine minutes by the time we take away the lead in. behind third place Alvarado behind her is Shireen Van Androy but that little attack then of Puck Peters has put her ahead by six seconds and Androy's already at 28 seconds at the end of lap number one Puck Peters with that win last time in Overizer the motivation is sky high best position in a World Cup for Norbert Riberol in green, behind her in red, Inge van der Heide, riding for the 777 team. Not far behind then is Elaine Clausel in seventh place. Tana Kant at the moment still holding on to a ninth place, just ahead of, or just behind now, Lucinda Brandt. It's Denise Betsema finding a way through the field in the red and black. 
Still in unknown territory down in 12th place. Today's race will be as close to 50 minutes as possible. The riders will know how many laps it's going to be by the time they get to the end of lap number two. That's where the judges will decide, having taken the average of the first couple of laps, how many laps that the riders are going to endure. And Van Empel not giving in at all. Riding, as you can see, no arm warmers or leg warmers or anything. Just happy to ride in the elements. Other riders having to choose to wear leg warmers, long socks, arm warmers, gloves and everything. Let's just take a look here. I think Celine Del Carmen Alvarado had a little fall at the top. Just trying to get herself back on the bike as quick as possible. Peters onto these tricky little steps. Manages to deal with those quite nicely. Takes a left-hand line, and that's the line that I saw in the recce. I saw Ellie Isabit choosing the left-hand line. We'll see whether he does the same during the men's race. It looks to me like the bottom little kick-in step at the base of that little hill is a little lower than the rest on the right-hand side. It makes it a little bit easier for you to just kick your way up the bottom of that climb. Alvarado about to be caught by Shireen Van Androoy, searching for another podium. Peters is really starting to move now. Five second advantage. Let's run through the top 10 for you then at the moment. Puck Peters of the Alps in the Koenig team leads. Fem Van Empel in second place. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado in third. Shireen Van Androoy is in fourth place. Marion Norbert Riberol in fifth. Inge van der Heide in sixth place, although those places have just changed. So Van der Heide in fifth, Norbert Riberol in sixth. Lena Berkier, the French rider in seventh. Her compatriot, Alain Clausel in eighth place. Lucinda Brand in ninth. Sana Kant in tenth place. When a rider gets that first big victory, the floodgates can open. And right now, that's what's happening with Puck Peters. For the last three rounds, the top three places have been in any sort of order. Van Empel, Peters and Van Anroy. And at the moment, Van Anroy is looking like she might come back into that third place. Way that she just picks the bike up and sprints her way up those steps. Cinder Brand, oh, a little bit close to the right hand side there. Brand just not riding at the moment with that confidence that she normally has. And last week, Sven Nace did say to her, You need a little bit more confidence on these courses. But that fall that she had where she broke bone in her hand may well have just taken that edge of confidence away Peters is making that climb look so easy isn't she and it's a tough little one a real little kicker hurts the legs after a few laps here's the tussle for third place Alvarado alongside Shireen Van Anroy having a few problems with getting the feet into the pedals. And Puck Peters now has opened up seven seconds. Well, the Dutch riders all happy to be back in the Netherlands. Here's another look at this uh, downhill section. Oh, that looked like a bad crash. 
There's a few riders just finding the line down there too difficult. It was Sara Casasola, the Italian rider. Van Empel just checking over her shoulder just to see what the tussle for third place looks like. There's no real worry at all about that. There's 49 seconds to third place from uh, Pat Peters, but 42 seconds from Van Empel to the third place fight. These two riders, of course, are going to drive each other on now, having uh, combined. And Celine Del Carmen Alvarado is going to ride, I'm sure, with Shireen Van Anroy. They're going to try very hard to stay as close to these two leaders as possible. Into the pits. But Peters, nice clean bike from her. Then Van Empel decides to do the same. She looks like she's starting to make a little bit of a charge now to get herself back to the lead. Gavanda Heider, they're in the red and black. Tussling with the rider in the green and white, Marion Norbert Ribroll. Van der Heider was the under 23 world champion back in 2019. On that occasion, she beat Fleur Nagengast into second place and Celine Del Carmen Alvarado into third. It's interesting when you look back at those under 23 world championships, because on that occasion, Puck Peters was in sixth place and we didn't really know too much about her at all. Now there's no doubt really that Puck Peters is the rider in the ascendancy in women's cyclocross. Peters took the under-23 world title in 2022, the beginning of this season. She beat Shireen Van Anroy into second and Fem Van Empel into third place on that occasion. She's making this course look very easy yet again. Up to the barriers. We're going to have a five-lap race this time. Going to be very close to the 50-minute mark, so right on the necessary kind of level. Van Androy just dropping back a little on this particular section. As we see Puck Peters cross the line, end of the second lap, 6,000 metres of racing covered. Fastest lap of the race so far, 8.59 for Puck Peters. Van Empel, a 9.01 lap. Puck Peters with an 8.59. Peters then with a 20 kilometer an hour lap. It's a tough little course, this. Think back to Overizer. The average lap speed was a lot faster than that. Puck Peters then, 20 kilometers an hour. Fem Van Empel at 19.94. The gaps in the top place is then eight seconds between first and second. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado is already one minute and six seconds behind in third place. That's just how quick Peters and Van Empel are ripping their way around this course. Crossing the line, the tussle for third. One minute and eight down. Peter's a real outdoor rider, loves to ride mountain bikes, cyclocross, loves to snowboard, likes to be in the elements. Sprinting away up that little climb. Here's Marion Norbert Ribeirault. A great performance by her so far. She likes these sort of conditions, really muddy, trudgy type of conditions. She's in fifth place. Lucinda Brand searching for that fifth place now. With Inga van der Heide on her wheel. Lena Berkier with a good result at the moment in eighth place. Then Elaine Corzell in ninth. And there's Denise Betsema in tenth place, who looks really laboured. That pedalling stroke is not smooth, is it? In eleventh place, Anik van Alphen. Van Alphen finished sixth last time out.
Welcome along. This is round seven of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup from Holst. The race situation, if you've just joined us, these two riders yet again at the front. And there is a yawning divide between these two riders and the rest of the other competitors. They are forcing each other on to produce the best performances in cyclocross in women's racing. We don't have Mariana Voss with us. We don't have Pauline, Pauline from Provo. But I'm sure at some point they're all going to come together and we are going to see really fantastic racing. But these two are giving us an absolute showcase right now. Into the pits for Celine Del Carmen Alvarado on the left. Van Anroy comes out, decides not to take a bike that time. Thanks for all your messages so far and good morning to you. David Ward, thank you for joining along today. Also Paul, enjoying the muddy racing. That's the windmill on the left-hand side. Come on. Oh, Van Empel comes flying down that descent. Van Empel using a daredevil ability today to close gaps on the leader. Van Empel, that was a tremendous descent to come back to the wheel of Puck Peters. Now these two riders together again, the rain has started to fall a little bit more heavily. Into this next section, this is where your strength and your running ability really does show. So go rider to rider on the ascent. Let's just take a little look at this section. Linda Carmen Alvarado comes to a standstill again on that climb. Fast downhill from Shireen Van Androy through the windmill for Alvarado in fourth place. The rider that takes a few risks will win today. You can see that on this course. Van Impel has chosen lines that no one else has chosen. Oh, and a fall. And Puck Peters also nearly falls. Van Impel gets that one a little bit wrong. And unfortunately, the bars also have gone that time. That might mean that she'll think again about taking some risks. But that's not the difficult section that she's been taking the risks in. Oh, and this is bad, bad news. That fall has cost her and cost her dear. She's lost a significant amount of time, Fem van Empel, with that fall and always where the bike falls on the right-hand side. Your gears have got all sorts of problems, and I think she has really hurt that rear mech. You can see the way it's not quite sitting the way it should, and everything is going wrong for the World Cup leader. Peters is absolutely flying, screaming away around this course. Va Fem Van Empel has got massive gear trouble now. That rear mech may well have gone into crash mode. It looks like it has. And now she's having to run. She's stuck in a big gear as well, I think. Well, the tussle behind Shireen Van Androy and Celine Del Carmen Alvarado were at 1 minute 15 seconds. 
And Empel still takes that really fast line down the left-hand side. She knows she's got big problems here. She's stuck in a gear she doesn't want to be in. The pits are not too far away, but she's lost about 39 seconds on the under-23 World Cup leader, who's putting her to the sword now with this attack. Ah, and Van Empel falls again. Let's take another look at this. Checks down and a slide as well. This is a day to forget for the World Cup leader. Everything was going right. She had taken a big risk on one of the descents. Come back to the wheel of Puck Peters. This rear mech after that crash in crash mode and now the mechanics have to get to work the world cup leader goes out of the pits now she just needs to recollect herself calm herself down stop that adrenaline pumping the way it is right now just take stock and try and ride her way back you never know peters could make a mistake as well gap is now 54 seconds after that little section on the course it just shows that you are right on the knife edge in cyclocross between absolutely superb racing and things going horribly wrong jumping the barriers close now to the end of lap number three. Oh, and van empel another little fall Van Roy is now only about 25 seconds behind in third place. Crossing the line to complete lap number three. A 9.14 lap that time. The slowest lap of the race so far for Puck Peters. What is going on with Fem Van Empel? We're on to lap four for the current leader. Van Impel was flowing her way around the course, taking the turns, making it look easy. Now it's just error after error for the World Cup leader. Shereen Van Anroy having to come to a standstill, run away over that top section. Third place, she's now 29 seconds behind. She's got a good advantage now of nine seconds on the fourth place rider. Selena Carmen Alvarado. Here's Fem Van Empel. That lap was a 10 minute and four second lap. It was almost a minute slower, or it was a minute slower than her previous lap, a minute and three seconds. The arrival of the third place rider. Yet again, we've got the same podium at the moment. Shireen Van Androoy, 32 seconds behind Fem Van Empel. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, fourth place for her. As we watch Shireen Van Anroy, don't forget you can follow at UCI underscore cycling or go to UCI.org for the race hub and all the information about the Cyclocross World Cup. This is round number seven. Lucinda Brand, little shake of the head in sixth place. Behind her is Inge van der Heide. And it's Lena Burke, two French riders joining together. Elaine Clausel in the white jersey. If you'd like to get in touch, please feel free on any social media at Ant McCrossan. Hello to John Lulet. Thanks very much for watching. Excited for today's racing, in particular, rooting for Shireen and Lucinda Brand. Don't forget in the men's race also today, the first tussle between Matthew Vanderpool 
and Tom Pidcock. A big day of racing, nice and early, a lot earlier than we're normally getting the race start. About two hours earlier than we would normally be talking about the women's elite race. That's Perrine Clausel in 13th place. Behind her, Leonie Bentfeld, and then Sanna Kans, who had a very good start, now in 15th place. Cook Peters up towards the windmill again, across that little cobbled section. Such a great little addition, isn't it? To go straight through the windmill with the doors open. Peters deals with that little section nicely. Van Van Empel looks like she's just riding this steady at the moment, getting her confidence back. See the mud flowing off the back wheel of Puck Peters. And Van Empel looks like things have calmed down now. She'll have lost that momentum, that pace that she had. And you're right in the race and you are shoulder to shoulder. That's when you really sometimes put in your best racing today. Unfortunately, that little risk didn't pay off. Alvarado shouldering that bike, just trying to get herself to the top of that little hill. And Peters works her way, sorry, Van Empel works her way to the top. This is Peters. Peters works her way over the top. Sprints her way up the stairs. A little bit windy when you reach the top here. The wind comes onto your left-hand shoulder. Peters just trying to get a foot in that left pedal. I think the mud is clogging it up a little. And she's having to work quite hard at getting the foot to clip in. Not sure that she's even managed to do it yet. May well have just gone in. Oh, and a big fall for the leader. Peters falls at the same point that Fem Van Empel fell. She just checks the bike. Let's take another look at it. She just didn't seem to have the line that time. She's been doing the same thing every single time. Takes the line, puts her right leg out. That time, the bike just flowed away from her. Well, let's hope her that her rear mech is all right, not in crash mode. Otherwise, Van Empel may well find herself coming back. Van Empel now at 49 seconds. She gets the line right that time, no problems at all. And here's Peters. How is the bike doing? No, the gears are OK, so she was lucky. Nothing locked up. Let's run through the top ten for you then as we approach the end of lap number four. Puck Peters leads with the fastest lap so far of 8 minutes 59 as well. Fen Van Empel in second place. This rider here of the Bauhaus Trek line, Shireen Van Anroy in third place. In fourth place, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, so it's an all-Dutch top four right now. Then Maria Norbert Riberol, the Belgian rider, in fifth in her best place so far. Lucinda Brand in sixth. Inga van der Heide is in seventh place. Lina Burke in eighth. Lenkelzell in ninth. And Anique van Alphen's made her way into the top ten. She's in tenth place with Denise Betsema just behind her in eleventh place. Put Peters up this little climb again. Really concentrating hard. Looking for the pits. Wants to get the bike changed this time. The bike is there. Nice clean bike. No worries. Gears will be good. Dips her feet back into those pedals. And Puck Peters goes out on the course. 39 seconds behind is the second place rider here. 
staan. Weer zo'n uh, schuinkantje waarbij uh, je uh, moet zeggen dat je moet hebben om alles niet naar beneden te schuiven. Lekker Puk! Lekker! Fast left hander there from Puck Peters. Van Empel back onto the bike in that red and white jersey as the World Cup leader. And of course, both riders wearing the red and white. They look pretty much identical, don't they, in terms of jerseys? Van Empel wearing the elite jersey, Peters wearing the under 23 jersey. Shireen van Androoy still riding superbly at the moment. This would put her back on the podium for the fourth time running. I haven't seen Anna Marie Verst back yet in the World Cup. We're hoping that she will be back soon. She's had that little injury. She finished third in Tabor. Hurdles again for our leader. Van Anroy in to take another Trek bike in the pits. The arrival of the leader of this seventh round of the World Cup, Puck Peters, one lap of racing to go. 9.33 lap that time, her slowest lap of the race. Ten Van Empel, who has not been out of the top two yet in this World Cup. She's there again. As she said to the interviewer at the start, second place is still pretty good. The arrival of the World Cup leader, a 90-point advantage. The gap will drop a little, but she's not in any trouble at all, is she? And Anroy manages to crest that climb that time. Just Celine Del Carmen Alvarado in fourth place. Alvarado was fourth in Bakesa Birken. That was her best performance since Waterloo, the first round of the season. The World Cup before today's race starts. Didn't really feature Van Androoy in the top places. She was in sixth place. But after this, she's certainly going to move herself up a little bit. Betsimo is dropping way out of this World Cup. Third place at the moment for Shireen Van Androoy with around about nine minutes of racing to go. Marion Norbert Ribberolt, this is her best ever performance in a World Cup. Alvarado crosses the line, fourth place at 2.01. Fifth place for Marion Norbert Ribberol. Behind her, Lucinda Brandt. On to this little section that really takes the strength out of the legs for the World Cup leader today, Puck Peters. There's our little group of riders tussling for what is going to be seventh place in that group of riders. Selene Corzell, Inge van der Heide, Lena Burkier. And this is Anik van Alphen, who has left and he's Betsema behind. At the moment, Betsema is a shadow of herself. Something is not going right for this rider. Yeah. 
Buckleaters onto the descent. Checks across, her lead's intact. She's increasing it now up to 41 seconds. Through the windmill again. And then onto this tricky descent. See if she can get this one right. Oh, has a little bit of a stop at the bottom. Here's Shireen Van Androy. Looks like we've got a little replay of her. Did she have a problem? And she did. Little slide, this muddy, wet grass as well, causing a few issues. It's a bit of a procession for this rider at the moment. Concentration is there. She looks superb on her bike at the moment. Every pedal stroke has got real power in it. Onto this next little run up. This is the one that will hurt the legs. The way the fast feet as she tries to find some grip. Like scaling a wall. Get to the top of that. Your heart rate is so high. And then pull. No one anywhere near her. She's 41 seconds behind Puck Peters. And at the moment, she's well over a minute ahead of Shireen Van Androy. And Empel takes a totally different line to everyone else. On to the runner for the rider who has dominated so many rounds of this World Cup. Picking her line well. Puck Peters wants to get this one right. And another fall for her. Let's hope that that gear is okay. Cannot afford to let it go into crash mode. Somehow the line that she had was perfect. Now it really isn't working for her anymore. Holst is one of those courses that is either your big friend or a huge foe. Shireen Van Androy riding superbly. <laughs> Murray Norbert Ribberol safely round that turn. So the fastest lap today, Pop Peters on lap two, 8.59.2, average speed 20.03 kilometres an hour. Finn Van Empel in second place on the fastest lap with 19.94 kilometres an hour. Then Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, then Shireen Van Androy as Lucinda Brand tries to find her way into a higher position and takes fifth place. Roy is now 18 seconds ahead of Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, so she can't just let up a little. She's got to keep pushing all the way into the finish. The Pal Sales and Bingo El Rider, Fem Van Empel. Not too many races left in the colours of Pal Salzen. Another little fall for Celine Del Carmen Alvarado. The riders have got little studs on the shoes that help them find a bit more grip on those tricky uphill sections. Getting close then to the end of this round of the World Cup. Metzema still outside the top 10. Marie Schreiber in 12th place today, the Luxemburger. And a K of Great Britain down in 18th place. The Canadian Sydney McGill in 21st place today. A few other riders. Lucia Gonzalez of Spain is down in 24th place. 
gives you an idea of a few of the other nations taking part in this round. Next time out, we move to Anvers before we head to Dublin in Ireland for a new round of the World Cup. Then to Val de Sole, then it's Gavert, Zonhoven, Benidorm, and then Besançon before the World Championships. Peters up that little climb. She's got so much time in hand. 44 seconds. She's made this race very hard for everyone. Attacked it from the start. Took the race on. Onto the barriers now for the final time. Not far from the line. She's going to make her way along here to the tarmac and then she's going to take another World Cup win. Onto the tarmac. This is the end of round seven in Hulst. Puck Peters takes the high fives from the crowd. It is two wins out of two. She points to the legs. The power of Peters has prevailed again as she wins. Fem van Empel. Seven rounds of racing and not out of the top two places. What a record that is. Last little section after the barriers. Fem van Empel onto the road, takes the left hand. It's been a trialed, difficult day for the World Cup leader. But still, after seven rounds of racing, this rider has not finished outside the top two. Shireen van Anroy. He's got about a minute till she reaches the finish line. Over the top of the climb there. Puck Peters destroyed the opposition, didn't she? Even after lap one, there were riders 30 seconds down. And Anroy, yet again, the best rider in the Balwas Trek lines today. Taking a left-hand turn, Shireen Van Androoy for four ra races running in the World Cup. Shireen Van Androoy has taken four podiums in a row. Third place for her again today. The race dominated by the young riders. Here's Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, fifth place last time, fourth place this time just off the podium behind her in fifth place Lucinda Brandt another difficult day for the former world champion and the arrival of Marion Norbert Ribeirol her best ever result in a world cup and she deserves to celebrate the former under 23 world champion is starting to find her feet. Over the barriers for Elaine Clausel in the white jersey, riding for the AS Bike Racing Team. Elaine Clausel is going to take a top 10 finish today. The French rider takes seventh place. Clausel just over three minutes down. Behind her, Inga van der Heide, then Alina Berkier. The French champion crosses the line. This is Marie Schreiber, but just turning the corner. Top 10 finish again today, Anik van Alphen. Van Alford just trying to stop her watch. Top 10 for her. Here's the Luxembourger, Marie Schreiber. 
Just being chased by Denise Betsema. Denise Betsema. 12th place for her. Just not happening for Betsema right now. Green Clausel comes across the barriers now and heads towards the finish line. Turns the corner. Green Clausel in 13th place. Elaine was in 7th place today. Good performances by the two French riders. Here's Sana Kant. Started well. She was in third and fourth place at the start. 14th place for her. Leonie Bentfeld in 15th place. Holst always produces a great race. Today, though, Puck Peters dominated. Here's the results of round seven. Puck Peters wins in 46 minutes, 31 seconds. Second place, Fem Van Empel, the World Cup leader. Shereen Van Androoy in third, then Alvarado in fourth. Brand makes the top five, dominated by the Dutch riders. Norbert Ribberol, the Belgian, in sixth place. The fans getting a few refreshments before the men's race happens and the podium of the women's race. It's never too much choice at a cyclocross race. Fruits and beer, and that's about it. Let's hear from the winner today, Puck Peters, after another dominant performance. Puck Peters, uh, congratulations with the victory. What made the difference today? Yeah, I started really fast, I think. I uh, had a small gap, but uh, Femme closed it in the second or third lap, I think. And uh, when she took over, she crashed. Uh, and I believe her, uh, her derailleur was in crash motors. And uh, yeah, the, her bike was a bit fucked. So uh, yeah, I got a lot of free seconds there. And uh, from then on, I just had to push uh, really hard everywhere. Then, yeah, it was uh, one race, uh, half, uh, half the race, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was such a hard one with uh, all the climbing, and I felt that uh, Fem was stronger on that part. So uh, yeah, I got a bit lucky today, I think, with uh, with uh, Fem's crash. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it would also be a, have been a battle for a first and second. Anyway, two out of two, it's quite good. Yeah, for sure, really happy about this one. Thank you. <laughs> Put Peters, pretty happy. With a pretty frank assessment of what was wrong with Fem Van Empel's bike. We're waiting for the podium presentation of round seven here in Hulse. So far this season, we really have seen a changing of the guard, haven't we, at the top of the overall series we started to see that happen towards the end of last season as we started to see Puck Peters in strong position last year she was second in Hulst second to Lucinda Brandt after that Peters was second in Flamenville and then she was third in Hugerheide that's when we really started to see that emergence properly of Puck Peters at the top of World Cup racing. And since then, this rider has been just showing she's getting stronger and stronger. And today was certainly one of those days. In a few moments, then the podium presentation of round seven here in Hulst.
Round seven of the UCI Cyclocross World Cup in Holst in the Netherlands. A fast start for the riders, 49 riders on seven rows in the grid, charging their way off the start line. First rider through the left-hand turn was Puck Peters, the winner of the last round of racing in Overizer. She really pressed on the tempo nice and early. Going with her was the rider in blue, Selinda Carmen Alvarado, Fem van Empel and Sanna Kant, the Belgian champion, having her best start behind in some of these little uphill sections, all sorts of trials for the riders. Puck Peters clearly wanted to just try and line things out. She pushed on on the tough uphill climbs. Eventually, Fem van Empel was the only rider who was able to go with her. The duo who have dominated the last few rounds back at the front again. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado searching for a podium finish today. Once we got to the barrier section, though, always Peters has that advantage. She seemingly had opened up a gap which would give her the lead, but Van Empel wasn't giving in. Holst is always a tough course for the riders. And Empel didn't worry too much. She just rode her way steadily back towards the front rider. The third place tussle really started to light up with Shireen Van Anroy there. And Empel was looking for a way back and she managed to find it on that descent. Shereen Van Anroy caught Alvarado and started to leave her behind. Van Anroy put herself into third place for the Balwas Trek Lions. Onto the tricky descent, and this is the point in which the race really changed. Van Van Empel, having caught Puck Peters, crashed and then had a lap to forget. Numerous crashes. Her gear locked in crash mode. She was unable to really contend. At the finish line, Puck Peters had a big advantage. She wins round seven by 42 seconds. Fem Van Ampel, thumbs up for her, still leader of the World Cup. A little bit of a moment to forget in this round. Shereen Van Anroy again in third place. The same podium yet again. This little chap has enjoyed watching the racing. Fem van Empel, second today. What made the difference between you and uh, uh, Piet uh, Petersen? Um, I think in the first laps, uh, not too ma many, but um, I crashed uh, in the corner and then um, my, uh, my bar... Uh, yeah, was totally uh, out of uh, yeah how it yeah out of control, and then um, my uh, uh, my bike uh, was in crash modus, so uh, there was a long uh, long time to the to the pit zone. But uh, I uh, I used my fighting spirit today, and uh, second was the highest as possible after my crash. So uh, yeah. Yeah, you lost about 45 seconds there. Then the race was over, I suppose. Um, For the win. Yeah, for the win maybe, but uh, Shirin was coming and uh, sailing, so uh, I need to uh, to fight for the second place, and uh, yeah, I'm happy with second, so uh, yeah. Because you stay leader now. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I think uh, a few uh, few more punts uh, today, uh, so uh, I did a good job. She certainly did do a good job. The important thing when you have a big problem like that, one, get to the pits, two, just try and stay calm. She's got a massive lead in this World Cup. Let's hear now from the third place finisher, Shireen Van Androy. This seemed Android. to be a very uh, tough race. Yeah, it's a really hard race. Like I really like this course, but um, before the start, like I was not sure if I wanted to start because yesterday I crashed pretty hard on my arm, and 
I could not really hold my handlebars so good, but I'm really happy I started because I just really like this race. So you did quite good. Yeah, I did better than expected. I was just hoping to like have a good race and in the top 10 maybe, but I was not expecting this today. Did you expect so big time differences? Um, yeah, I was expecting them to be pretty big. I don't think, like, I did not expect it to be this big, but yeah, it was just really hard. The mud made it even harder and it was really technical. So yeah, it was again a, <laughs> a big show today. She was just flying over this course. Puck show, it certainly was, but Van Anroy has shown just how strong she is. What a fighter she is. Finishing on the podium despite that crash yesterday. Let's take a look at the results. Peters wins ahead of Van Empel and Van Anroy. A good result for Marion Norbert Ribberol with her first ever top six in a World Cup. And there's the top ten. Waiting for the podium presentation. The rain is falling. Let's update you on the situation in the World Cup. Fen Van Empel has 250 points. Puck Peters closes in a little. 85 points now between the riders. Linda Carmen Alvarado now in third place. So Peters is slowly but surely moving her way up the standings. Lucinda Brand down in seventh place. Fans in Hulls just looking for the best vantage point to pick up and watch the men's race, which is coming up shortly. Quite a condensed program here in Hulls today. Things have been moved around. The junior and under 23 race has come at the end of the day today, which is unusual. Look out over the lake. Peters has taken the victory from Fem Van Empel and Shireen Van Andel. The men's race is coming up shortly. That's going to be a real battle royal, I think. We'll see whether we can uh, get the real fight that we're looking for between Pidcock and Matthew van der Poel today. Of the under 23 riders just getting a chance to take a look at the course, find out the contours of that. Well, thanks very much for joining us for the women's race. We're going to move on to bring you the men's race shortly. From here in Holst, round seven of the men's race as well. We've seen another victory for Puck Peters today. She dominates the last couple of rounds of the women's racing. <laughs>
Welcome to a cold and rainy holst in the Netherlands for the men's elite UCI Cyclocross World Cup. This is round seven of racing and today is the expected showdown. The first time that we have Tom Pidcock lining up against Matthew van der Poel. Two of the kings are here and we're very much looking forward to how this race plays out.